Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is episode two of our Try to Fix series. The series in which we grab some unusual item or an item we have no idea of what might be wrong with it, and we just go for it, regardless if we fix it or not. In today's video, we're gonna look at an old Epoch Galaxy 2 tabletop machine. This one's from about 81 or 82, and uh, you can see it sitting right behind me on our display. So, it came to us from Facebook, and all we knew is it didn't work. So, stick around and see if we get it done. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today on the bench, we have a Galaxy 2 tabletop system from about 1981. And this is episode two of our Try to Fix series. This one was actually donated to the channel um, by a group of good guys. One guy in particular posted it up for free. Somebody else wanted it before me, but actually was a fan of mine and he said, Go ahead and give it to Tony. So this showed up on Facebook and it was through the Pittsburgh retro gaming section. And the ad said, does anyone want this before I trash it? It didn't power up with batteries, but the last time I tried 10 years ago, it did. I'm in Greensburg, it's free. So I was very excited to get my hands on this. Now, in the spirit of the try to fix series, I haven't opened it, I haven't looked at it. We're simply gonna dig in this together. We don't know what we're gonna find. Could be simple, could be tough. Might not fix it at all. But I'm gonna walk through the entire process of what happens when something hits my bench. So let's get into it. The box is in pretty rough shape, but hey, it's all there, which is better than I would have ever done as a kid. So we got all, all the packaging. We don't have the manual, but that's okay. It's a pretty simple system. Now, a lot of times when I come across this, these kind of items in Facebook or at a garage sale, the real issue is they've been stored away in a wet basement or attic and, and there's some internal issues. But what we'll do is we'll come in and we're just gonna open it up. We're gonna see if there's anything obvious, and we'll also make sure all the buttons are operating. Give it a general cleaning, and from there, we'll see if we can get it to come to life. So, let's just get started. The battery door's there, that was better than when I was a kid. Oh, and I'm already seeing our first problem. Looks like we've got quite a bit of rust on our contacts, but we'll clean that up as we go. So let's go ahead and get into this, into the bottom. Looks like we've got some Phillips screws. Looks like our top screws are missing. That's okay. Something is holding us up. I'm not sure what it is. Looks like a few screws were missing, but hey, when I was a kid, I tore apart all my toys too. This tape's on there, but it doesn't look like it's holding anything. This should come apart. Well, this one's not looking like it's gonna to be too happy inside. Everything is rusted. This looks like it's probably been wet, not just in a damp place, but 
hey, let's go through it. We'll see what we can figure out. It'd be great if this comes back to life. Um, you can see in here, there's literally wet, rusted drips. So our board's been wet before. So let's just set that aside for a second. All of our hardware is crusted over. We've got quite a bit of rust on these pads. These are just the buttons that fell from our faceplate when I took it apart. Okay, we might be lucky with this one, maybe not, but let's get these boards out and give it a basic cleaning. I think we're gonna have to find some new screws for this stuff. There's not even a screw hole left in that one. Just as an FYI, if this would have come to me as a customer requested repair, I would have hit this position and we would have already stopped and told the customer, probably isn't worth trying to save. Just because I know the labor involved and the probable outcome wouldn't be favorable to a customer. But for this video, we're gonna see what we can do. Got us all separated from the bottom. Let's see what we got with our fluorescent display. Got four screws down inside of here. And we have some wires soldered. So we're gonna go ahead and desolder them just so we can work with this a little easier. And we'll have to clean up these shells before we put it back together. All right, so our guts are out. Now, this board here is pretty rough. We'll have to see if we have even continuity back behind where this, the membranes were. Um, obviously, our power switch is highly corroded. I think we're gonna take these ribbons off so we can work on these boards separately. And then get a better inspection of our display. And since the solder is 
35 years old and a bit on the crusty side. I'm just going to put some extra flux on it so everything flows. You can see the solder is very gray. It's oxidized. There's our little joystick. Okay. So, well, we'll leave those screws there just for a moment. <clears throat> All right, so this is, this is kind of the unknown or the, the, the potential issue. We have this fluorescent, vacuum fluorescent display and the legs, are rusted. Now the question is, did that rust break the seal in our display? I'm not going to unsolder it from the board, but it looks like, I mean, we'll give her a try. So this piezoelectric speaker looks awfully crusty, but Honestly, this is a piece of quartz crystal with a couple hunks of metal around it, so I'm sure this is more or less unaffected. Just give it a little cleaning. And just give this board a basic cleanup. Get the rust off of it. This capacitor is liable to be bad. We'll take it off the board and we'll check it. I think fortunately this main board doesn't look too awful. It looks like it was more or less protected, but it's just these legs that worry me. I have to think of a better solution for cleaning those. But for now, let's go ahead and pop this cap off. Or we can even uh, we'll put some fresh solder on it. Just hit it with the ESR meter, see what it looks like. The reason I put fresh solder on it's just so we get a good uh, connection with the meter. And we'll zero this out.
0 0.1, 0 0.11. And what is the value of that cap? 47 microfarads, 50 volts. Point one is actually in spec. So even though that is crusty on the surface, it looks like the cap itself is still okay. So we might be in luck. None of these other caps show signs of leakage. So I'm going to clean up the rest of this old solder. So we can put our ribbons back in when we get to it. All right, I think, I think we'll be okay on the board. So let's set that aside for a second. We're gonna have to do some cleanup on these plastics. And obviously, you know, we, I'll do some cleanup off camera because um, this is gonna get tedious scrubbing all the little bits. But let's go back to these boards and see what we've got. So this is our control board. It's our buttons. So let's just start by a little cleaning a little polish see what we get now i never recommend getting too aggressive with the old systems like this but you know, when they're kind of gone, you got to do what you got to do. And sometimes you need very fine sandpaper just to buff it a little bit. Well, there's still traces back behind there. Now, obviously, we wind up removing The uh, protective layer, you know, these were plated. As you can see, this one here is silver. Um, and I could actually coat them with solder if we wanted, but it's not like this guy is going to get that much use. All right, well, you know what? This is cleaning up a little nicer than I was expecting it to. But this just goes to show, if you've got stuff, if you live in a cold weather state that you know basements get damp and like where I'm at here in Pittsburgh, basements get damp and attics get extremely damp in the middle of summer because the humidity climbs. If you know as a kid you had this stuff and it's over at your folks house or at a relative's house and it's being stored in a shed or an attic or whatever, and you have any want of saving this, get them now, make sure they're clean and dry. So this board is looking not too bad. So let's go ahead and just go to continuity. And we'll check some of this out. Hmm. 
It's nice. It looks like it's been labeled for us, but we can see here we've got some voltage. Okay, so we didn't have any cracked traces around there. And it comes the whole way around to this side. So we're good. And our port, while it's crusty inside, it's, it's there. We'll clean that out too. So let's go ahead and look at the rest of it. Here's ground. Hit some of these spots that are exposed. Oh, that's not the ground plane, that's the positive power. So, ground is this side. Okay, all of our fingers have ground. All right, so all of our buttons have ground. This one marked A0. All of our fingers have contact. B0 is over here. All of our fingers have contact, and B1, all of our fingers have contact. All right, well, as ugly, <laughs> you know, as ugly as this one was, here again, we might be okay. So, we'll set this one aside. Um, since we were on that, let's go ahead and look at our membranes and our switch. And uh, I'll throw these nasty Q-tips away. Get some fresh alcohol. By the way, um, I know a lot of my regulars will know this is 91% uh, IPA. Um, it's gotten a little easier to get. Uh, for a while, when the pandemic started, all the companies making uh, hand sanitizers were gobbling up the alcohol. But uh, fortunate for us, uh, at least in the United States, that uh, it's no longer an issue. Well, the pandemic's an issue, but getting alcohol isn't. So, okay, these, um, the membranes look like they're in pretty good shape. There's no rips, there's no tears. The little carbon path is still pretty clean. What about our switch? Well, there's some rust up around on the plastics, but the actual contacts are real nice. So I think our switch is fine. Okay, we've got a good switch. What's our next bit? This joystick. And man, this one is crusty. <laughs> and you can see the old lead solder, how gray it is. And of course we got rust on the back. This looks like it took some abuse. I'd imagine water or something spilled directly down inside of it. We'll probably have to take this off the board to do a proper cleaning. We might wind up taking this ribbon off, maybe even replacing it with some standard wire. Now, wow, this thing is just, just a mess. Okay, um, let's just go ahead with a, go with a paper towel, it's a little heavier. Let's see what we can do to just clean this a bit. So it looks like we still have contacts down inside of here, but they are pretty 
crusty also, but they had a little grease on them. They might actually not be as bad as we thought. So we'll flush a little alcohol down inside and just run that back and forth. Do it on the other side. Okay, so essentially off this board, we've got three wires. So I'm guessing it's a common and a left and a right. So this is just a simple switch. I wanna make sure these wires aren't touching each other. Matter of fact, we'll just trim them. Okay, and we'll come back to our meter in continuity mode. We'll just check the wires. All right, so there's a good solder connection. In the way this switch is wired, the shell is grounded and we've got this pin. Okay, this pin's coming over to our grounds. This pin is coming over to two contacts on this side. So under here, I'm looking at six, six pins. And I believe it's just using both of them, which it is. I think this is using both. This one is not connected to anything. Well, they're connected to each other. I guess internally they're connected. And this is connected. So with the switch in the center, it looks like these four would be connected, but these outer ones would not be. But if we move the switch to the side, which I'm going to do by pushing the board, <laughs> we actually get connection. All right, and we should probably be able to do the same to this side. And <laughs> by uh, pure luck, um, this board is actually functioning. I, I wouldn't have thought. <laughs> Honestly, I was thinking we were gonna have to have come up with some sort of control on that switch. So, um, all right, so we know our controller board is functioning. We know our joystick is functioning. Our membranes are in good shape. Um, maybe this isn't as bad as we thought. Now the, the wild card to all this is of course our main board. Um, but there are no, with the exception of these legs being a bit rusty, And this voltage regulator looking a little crusty, but that's just outside. We can replace the voltage regulator. I don't see any reason why this would not start up. So, Get the flux cleaned out of these holes. We'll put our wires back together. And we'll put it on the bench supply and see if this thing turns on.
think I soldered that backwards. I'm gonna check uh, video and I'll be right back. Yep, I absolutely soldered that on backwards. So, um, so I forgot to turn the camera back on. I desoldered it, flipped it over, and put it back on. So, that leaves us with our joystick board. And it's gonna solder on in a similar point. Poke through and solder it up. Now, one thing I do need to make people aware of who are going to do this kind of work and try to salvage these old systems. These old traces can be pulled off the board pretty easy. Um, you know, these solder pads. And actually when I flip this one over, um, desoldering it a second time and using flux and, and desoldering braid, it started to pick up a little bit. So I scraped just a little bit off the trace and I pushed the wire over on it and soldered it down just to make sure we had a good connection. So, here is our entire system and let's go back into the bottom so this <laughs> it's full of rust um we've got four looks like c batteries so that should be what volt and a half a piece for it should be six volts all right so let's get our power supply and set us up for Six volts. We got one for five. We'll just bump that one up. Voltage six. Okay. And this may be switched inside. So we will. We'll hook to the back of the plug. Because I'm quite sure this used a, a small switch inside our phone jack to cut the DC power from the batteries if you plugged it into a wall. So we're just hooking direct to the board. And of course our ground is a common ground. And this should just be a short. Let's see what happens. It helped to turn the power on. There we go. We got an output now. Well, we have sound, ah, uh, but unfortunately, we have no display. Yeah, I'm. Oh, wait, what is that? I was about ready to call this one done. Let's turn off our output. There is, I just saw something. Something marked SO10. Oh, it's looking like a diode, but what was it? Oh, this might be tough. We might have to do a little research and come back to this one. Uh, give me a few minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, sorry for the uh, interruption in the video. So I had found that we powered up, but we had no display. And I'd noticed right here marked S10, it was a diode and it was cracked. Um, unfortunately, diodes are kind of an unusual beast as far as analog electronics go. Um, you know, a lot of times little transistors such as these, you can figure out if they're NPN or PNP type, and you can get an idea of current flows. And a lot of times you can fudge them. Um, you can just 
you know, grab a generic and throw it in place. But there's different types of diodes and they have different purposes. There's, um, you know, standard switching diodes or signal diodes, and there's rectifier diodes that are high current, and um, of course, then there's zener, zener diodes. And they can work as a conventional diode, but in reverse zener mode, they have a breakdown voltage and they kind of will act as a, a regulator of sorts. Um, and of course, you can get them in all different voltages. Um, the downside is, is most diodes don't have any real markings. You know, you'll, you'll have a band on one edge telling you where the anode and cathode are. But a lot of times there's cryptic characters on them. The one I pulled off and I cleaned it up with some alcohol and got it under a loop. It had B1 on one side and it looked like 7.5 on the other. It could mean anything, but you know, maybe it's a seven and a half volt uh, Zener. Um, so I grabbed, I just looked around my parts bins and I had some small signal transist um, diodes and uh, you know, switching diodes. And I was gonna put them in and I was just kind of checking them. I did this off camera and I didn't get a real warm fuzzy feeling. Although, as you can see, you know, they have, they're just kind of this red glass looking diode. Um, but most of these on this board appear to be Zeners. This is a conventional, but this is a Zener. There's a couple under here that are Zeners. So knowing that it's hard to pick a generic, um, I decided to not use uh, or try these signal diodes. Um, they could cause issues short out and, and burn up. Of course, any of them can. So just for giggles, and this may be close to the end of this video, um, I grabbed a, a, an old power supply. Uh, this is actually from a fat PS2, and I knew it was bad, but I knew there were some zeners on it. And for some reason, I just don't have any zeners in any of my parts bins. So I stole one off the board. Um, actually, I stole two and I checked across it and I got similar readings to another one that's on the other side of this round transformer. And uh, I kept the, the better of the two, put the other one back in that board. Um, always try to put your parts bits back together uh, just so you have parts for later. So this is the plan, uh, at least for this step. We know this is blown up. I mean, we could see it, it's cracked in half. We have a good suspicion that it's a Zener. We have a good suspicion that it's a seven and a half volt Zener. So we're gonna put this one in and it may let all the smoke out. It may not do anything, but uh, this is kind of our next step. And unfortunately, if this doesn't work, um, we may have to just call this one dead. Um, just because, like here again, I don't know 100% sure if our vacuum display is still good. Um, generally, if they outgas, you, you'll see fog or, or other issues. So I, I'm not sure. Um, but without a schematic or having another one to pull a known good part to do some checks on, it, it makes it hard to test diodes. But we're going to go ahead and put this one in. And as you can see on the board, they, you know, the only part here is they'll show which way the band goes. And of course, on the diode there is uh, this little band here. So we're gonna go ahead and just get my glasses on. We're gonna go ahead and bend it into place. Sorry, this is gonna be a bad angle and a bad shot. But when you pull them out of one board and put them in another, Those legs aren't very long, but I think we can get some solder on them. Oops. Of course it fell out.
I'm gonna do it a little different. I'm gonna hold it in place and get one of these legs soldered. Put a little flux on it. There we go. We have a zener of unknown value stuck in the hole. Um, this may get exciting. Might not, like I said, it may do nothing. It may let the smoke out. Or we might get lucky and it might actually turn on. So we got it set at six volt at 0.8 amps. So we're keeping the current kind of low. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and look at that. We got, uh, we got a screen. We can select our game. I don't know what the different games are. I don't have the manual. Hit the start button. See if our joystick works. And our joystick works. Look at that. We actually got a, a win on this one. I, to be 100% honest, I wasn't expecting to get a win on this one. So, all right, we're going to um, set the shell aside. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the shell. I'm going to put it back together, and I'll show you it all back in its working glory. I'll be right back. Once again, I'm sorry to put some breaks in this video. I know these were supposed to be kind of uncut, but... I'm sure you didn't want to watch me taking the shell to the sink and scrubbing it with... Uh, Clorox. So anyway, I went ahead, cleaned up the shell, reassembled it. Uh, I did a few extra bits, uh, like the spring behind this button was kind of rusty. So I just buffed it with, you know, uh, a scouring powder. And I did the same thing with our contacts down below. So this isn't a full restoration by any means. It was simply a, let's clean all that nasty rust out of this thing and reassemble it, see what it looks like. So, as I recall, this was C batteries. So, we'll grab some C batteries off the shelf. And if I buffed our contacts well enough, I should be able to get this to come on. Tip it towards the camera so you guys can see it. Of course, you can see my ring light, but. <laughs> and there it is. Running and looking good and we've got some lights in the way. We'll tip it up towards this camera and see what we can do. Looks like our start button works. Our joystick still works. Oops. <laughs> and our fire button works if I would uh, hold it. But uh, you can obviously tell how much louder that piezo is when it's mounted inside of a plastic shell that can resonate. Anyway, so this one had a happy ending. We were able to get it to come back to life and we were able to clean it well enough to make it operate with batteries. And that means we can add it over to our shelf for our intro. So I appreciate you being here and watching these videos. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and make them down below. I respond to everything that's a real question. Give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button while you're at it. And uh, if you enjoyed this type of content, that's not the standard repair, because I mean, let's face it, when we got a switch that doesn't charge, yeah, we kind of know what's wrong with it. But if you liked it, let me know. Thanks for joining. I'll catch you on the next video.